It's a microscopic organism that quickly destroys brain tissue and can kill in just days. So I'm surprised that the, there is now more of these tests done um, regionally in different parts of the U.S. Time is of the essence. It's like you having an airbag. Well, I don't need an airbag. I've never used an airbag. Well, when you get in a car accident, you're going to need that airbag. At this point, if you can get a result in five hours when we have to wait 24 hours every day, it's amazing. Hit subscribe and leave us a comment below. In August of 2016, 16-year-old Sebastian De Leon and his family traveled from South Florida. I took a nap in the car. To start what was supposed to be a fun vacation at Orlando's theme parks. On Sunday, we were planning on having a pool day and watching the game mm -hmm. and spend it with our family. And um, he woke up in the middle of the night complaining that he had a headache and it was strong. I was on my side and at that moment it felt like I was getting pushed into like the pillow. And then when I woke up, I just couldn't move. My body felt stiff. And that's when I told my mom, mom, like this is not normal. So I just woke up, woke up my husband and told him, listen, we have to go to the emergency or the emergency room because this is not looking good. They asked me had I been in uh, fresh water. Uh, and that's when I told him that, yeah, I had. Doctors immediately suspected that Sebastian may have contracted Nagleria phalari, better known as the brain-eating amoeba, by swimming in a summer camp pond. It's a microscopic organism that quickly destroys brain tissue and can kill in just days. Tell me about the moment they came out and told you what it was. I still remember it, but at that moment, I felt like time stopped. The next words were, uh, I want you to say your goodbyes, because we're going to put him in a, in a coma, and, and we don't know if he's going to wake up. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says this deadly amoeba can be found in any body of fresh water. It can infect humans if they get that water up their nose. Most reported infections happen in southern states where the climate is usually warmer, with most reported in Florida and Texas. But cases have also started to emerge as you move north, in states like Virginia, and as far as Minnesota. It's a rare disease, right. um, and so you don't see it very often. So we have two buildings. This building is used for manufacturing, um, uh, all the manufacturing we have. Todd McLaughlin is the CEO of Profounda Pharmaceuticals in Orlando. So this, this is a lab where we do our quality testing. Aside from creating their own brand of healthcare products. This actually is the, the, the batch that just came in of the new Infovito. Profounda is also the only U.S. distributor of Impavito. Sebastian was the first patient ever to receive miltefacine or Impavito while still conscious. The only drug there's the pill that kills this amoeba. We got the call. Uh, I got the call um, from first from the from the hospital, then I got a call from the Florida Department of Health, and then I got a call from the CDC, all within the span of about two hours. Uh, we heard about it, and my son uh, immediately hopped in the car in his pajamas um, and because he didn't want to waste time and got the drug and drove it directly to the hospital and uh, within you know 20 minutes he was at the hospital with the drug and that really I think is what helped uh, Sebastian. Sebastian became one of only four people to survive the brain-eating amoeba in the United States. He worked through months of physical therapy to relearn how to walk and even tie his shoes again. So how much is it? It's about it's about forty eight thousand dollars for the for the treatment for the month, for for a thirty day supply. For the twenty eight day supply, correct. But McLaughlin says patients will never pay more than a hundred dollars. Despite that, and the fact that every minute counts when someone is infected, very few hospitals have Impavito in stock. So why don't more hospitals just keep this on hand as a preventative? So I'm going to answer that question a different way. Is why do people keep it on hand? And the answer is because they've seen a case of it before. So they have cases so they can see it. Whereas, well, I've never seen that before, so therefore I don't need it. It's like you having an airbag. Well, I don't need an airbag. I've never used an airbag. Well, when you get in a car accident, you're going to need that airbag. 
He was a handful, but he was our handful. He was very outgoing. He made friends very easily. Jordan Smilski's father, Stephen, believes his 11-year-old contracted this amoeba while swimming in hot springs during a family vacation to Costa Rica. Saturday, he, he, he got sluggish in the afternoon. He started vomiting at like midnight on Saturday. We took him to the emergency room on Sunday, diagnosed him with viral meningitis. They admitted him to Children's. And Monday, he woke up, he actually, we thought he was going to be okay because he was in good spirits. On Monday, it's like God gives you those last few hours and you don't even know. We ordered the drug from the CDC and it arrived at 8 a.m. That was Wednesday morning. He died at 6.30 that morning. We found out Jordan was the fifth child that died from this at his hospital. And we realized if we didn't step up, the sixth child would end up with the same thing and the same issues that we went through, those parents would go through too. Thank you for coming to the second uh, PAM Summit. Uh, my name is Steve Smelsky. My wife Shelly and I would like to welcome you all here. Stephen and Shelly Smelsky created the Jordan Smelsky Foundation for Amoeba for Awareness. And they started annual Amoeba Summits featuring top doctors in the field. And we shared information. And the next boy that came into the hospital was Sebastian De Leon, and he lived. Hey, guys. Hi, Sebastian. This Hello. Is, uh... <laughs> My name is uh, Dr. Jose Alexander. I'm a medical microbiology and medical director for the microbiology department in Advent Health. After treating both Jordan and Sebastian, doctors at Advent Health were concerned that the test to detect this deadly amoeba was taking too long to get results back. So Dr. Alexander and his team took it upon themselves to come up with a faster solution. In the instrument, we are able to put the cartridge. We have a capability to put six in each side of the, of the instrument. Their tool, a PCR test, made more widely available during the COVID pandemic. It trims a wait time of nearly a week down to just hours. And I say it's just putting together the recipe in the right way. So I'm surprised that the, there is now more of these tests done um, regionally in different parts of the U.S. And you're hoping other hospitals sort of latch on to this and, and use it, right? Yes. This is a game changer. And if every hospital has the test available, they can check it themselves without sending the sample of uh, CSF to the CDC in Atlanta. Time is of the essence at this point. If you can get a result in five, in five hours when we have to wait 24 hours every day, it's amazing. The, the care that they took of my child, it wasn't, he wasn't an experiment. He was a human being being treated. And they were looking for solutions. They got involved in a human way, because we're human. But I am eternally grateful. We'd like to hear what you think about the topic. Leave us a comment below and be sure to subscribe to our Solutionaries channel. We're just getting started.